Hello and welcome to the Will Leach Show. I am the aforementioned Will Leach and I thank you for spending part of your day with me. Today's show is about the NCAA tournament. Now, I come to you live from the opening week of the NCAA tournament. Now, we try not to place these shows too much in any specific time frame, but I'm telling you right now, it's the day before the first day of the NCAA tournament, and you are the last people I'm going to talk to until I go to a sports bar and just scream at the television for about 14 hours. Now, I do not know any of these players or any of these teams, but by 5 p.m. tomorrow, I will be as invested in the souls of every Abilene Christian Wildcat as I have ever cared about any of my closest friends. The glory of the NCAA tournament is that how much for four days we lose our minds over players and teams we have never thought about before, and once the tournament is over, we'll never think about again. It is context-free fandom, and it is the best. The NCAA tournament is the best. And this, of course, is how they get away with it. Big-time college athletics is as corrupt as any institution, athletic or otherwise, in the country. Think about how gross the NFL can feel or the ethical compromises we sometimes have to make to enjoy our favorite sports can feel. College athletics is like that, except they don't even pay the players. <laughs> college sports are built to exploit teenagers for our amusement and the corporate champions at Coca-Cola, Chevrolet, and Capital One. Five years ago, at Jerry Jones' diamond-encrusted billion-dollar monument to his dissolving skull in Arlington, Texas, I watched Shabazz Napier help Connecticut win a national championship in front of nearly 100,000 people who paid 400 bucks a pop to watch him do it, and then to watch him point out after the game that he literally didn't have enough money to buy food. It's all just so gross. But the tournament... Tournament lets them all get away with it. We spend 11 months of the year thinking the letters NCAA represent all that's terrible in the world, but the one month a year that those letters represent comparing brackets with our dog wipes all of those 11 months away. We ignore how awful they are because it is so, so fun. And God, it is so fun. And yes, I stand before you as guilty as anyone. I'm worse, actually, because I've been writing about how vile college sports are for decades, and yet every March I forget all of that and scream at Jim Spinarkle for two hours. I'm a hypocrite. I'm worse than anyone else, actually, because if you really broke it down, I have to admit, I don't actually care. I mean, I do. I mean, I care enough to mention it and wag my finger disapprovingly, but not enough to actually do anything. I don't want them to change because that would mean the end of the tournament, and that's the last thing I want. And that's what sports do. They make us forget how we are and what we value because they are so purely enjoyable. I don't even have an overarching point here. I'm a liar and a thief. Now, go Wofford. My guest today is a wonderful actor and artist who also played Division I basketball at Bucknell University. You can also see him now on The Good Fight on CBS All Access on Thursdays. Please welcome Nyambi Nyambi. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Hey, you're playing to the crowd in the yes. back. It's embarrassing. I know. They, they, they get, they, it can be too much sometimes. Uh, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you for coming. No, thank you for having me. So uh, it is tournament season. i got a lot of questions about the tournament yes. season. Because I, uh, I went to the University of Illinois, mm -hmm. which used to make the tournament years yeah, and years yeah, yeah. ago. Yes, I uh, remember that. I remember uh, those times. Yeah, but long time. It's yes, been six yes. years. Uh, but I'm curious. You, so you played at Bucknell. Yeah. But you, are an, you grew up in Oklahoma. So you're an Oklahoma fan. Yeah, well, I was born. I was sooner born. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm sooner, so, um, sooner born, sooner bred. And when I die, I'll be sooner dead. Yes, yes. You know, that's what we say. Hopefully um, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But much later. Yes. Much later. But later, dead. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, my, my parents went to school there. My sister went to school there. I was born on the campus of the University of Oklahoma, so I'm a huge Sooner fan, all the way back to Billy Tubbs. So you are. So what was it like seeing him? Like they made the big run. A yeah. Years ago. Like, like, are oh, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you? A, are you a Kruger guy? Are you? Uh, no, I am a Kruger, yeah. Kruger guy. I think Kruger has been amazing. You know, the thing about uh, uh, the Sooners. Is that we, you know, we don't garner the the type of talent that you know, where you have like four or five All Americans, right. you know, on the squad. There's always one. But right. you, you, you know, you always right. get that one guy. You yeah. know, uh, with but then listen, most teams don't get one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But then it's also one emerging guy. You know, when you go back to like, uh, you know, Blake Griffin, uh, you have uh, Buddy Heald. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, last year with Trey, uh, Trey Young, uh, you always get one guy, and then everybody else sort of steps up around them. The thing I loved about Trey Young yeah. was he was not 
like coming into the season, I don't think he, he was on. They thought he was going to be good. Yeah. But no one, he wasn't even on like draft board. They thought he was too small. Yeah. And he comes in and just completely dominates the league. I as a uh, as a fan of sports teams, mm -hmm. that's what I want. Like, it's awesome to have, like, the great recruit that comes in and is awesome as you would expect him to be. Yeah. But I feel like it's more fun when you get someone that kind of comes out of nowhere yeah. and just completely elevates you. I feel yeah. like that must have been the most fun season. No, it was an amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing through December. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're kind but of, I really feel, I, you know, I, I wish that that sort of run happened instead in January, February. Right, right. Uh, because, um, you know, like, everybody was, like, like all the cameras, all eyes were on him. Once that December run happened, they were calling him Steph Curry, yeah. and it's like, oh please, no, leave him yeah. alone, leave he's, him alone. He's like literally he's like Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but now in the league, I mean, I saw stats where uh, for the Hawks since the All Star break, he's averaging 25 a game. Yeah, he's rolling. Right uh, 8.5 assists. I mean, he's he's killing it. So you know, uh, I, I think he's now found uh, sort of his. Uh, he's figured out the league. So, well, that makes it sound yeah. so easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, because so, to me, this is tournament week. We are talking yeah. during, uh, during tournament week. And what's funny to me about the tournament is you, you played a buck now. Yeah. You guys did not make the tournament while you were there. No, we did not. But, like, to me, the fun part Sad. about the tournament. Oh, I, don't worry. I'm going to make you relive all those unnecessary memories. Uh, for me, uh, the fun part about the tournament is anyone can make it. Right? Yeah. Like, the, to me, that's the joy of it. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you're three, if you can qualify for your conference tournament, you can get hot for one week. Yeah. And, then, and then once the tournament starts, I always remember when Northwestern State beat Iowa on, like, a last-second shot, yeah. like, falling out of bounds, like, 10 years ago. And for, for one day, with all the big sports going on in the world, everyone was focused on this tiny little town in Louisiana. Yeah. For me, that is the fun of the tournament. When you were playing for Bucknell, mm -hmm. I mean, did you guys, was the tournament the goal every year? Did you imagine what that was going to be like? Or I mean, I mean, for us, like, like you know, now I'm going to go go to the cliche answers, but um, where we'd say, no, our goal was to win the Patriot League. Yep. You know, our it's goal... over. You don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> You're not like, come our on, goal, these our cameras aren't even Patriot on. League. You can say our whatever goal, you want. No, and of course, I mean, we wanted to make the make the tournament. In fact, the year before I got there. Um, uh, uh, we lost to to Navy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the uh, the uh, championship game. So the and championship game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and I was like, man, I want to go and and like make it happen for us. Was that know? one of the reasons you decided to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of the reasons. And and uh, and you know, with the guy Jarrell Holden who was there, you know, I was you know playing behind him when I first started, and um, you know, the one tournament, the one tournament where we got to the final. In fact, I believe we were the number one seed. We were the higher seed. Um, and we ended up losing. I've, I've sort of blocked it out. I understand. Out of I understand. So I can't remember if it was Colgate or Lafayette. Uh, I think it was Lafayette. Um, and what year I is this? The, what, what year is this? That would have been 2000. Okay. Yeah, 2000. And um, no, I, I blocked it from memory. But I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. But like, yeah. But uh, how sad were you? Because we were. So, it was crazy because we were winning with five minutes to go, and then you know, like, That's oh, right. we're going to the yeah. dance. I'm like, I'm about to go to the dance, and because you know, I'm a kid that I, I recorded everything. You know, with VHS, of course. Right, right, right. Uh, like, you know, from 89 on, like, uh, you know, you're talking about the Michigan teams with Glenn Rice. Oh, yeah. You're talking about the UNLV teams, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Larry Johnson, Stacey Augman, Anderson Hunt, you know, those guys. Um, uh, the Duke teams, and then, of course, the Fab Five with uh, That with brief Michigan. moment where people liked Duke. There was yes. that brief moment when oh. they beat UNLV that people actually liked them. Let me tell you something, man. I was a Duke, huge Duke fan because of Johnny Dawkins. Yeah, right, and right. And then I was a Duke fan all the way up until Duke played Kentucky, the, mm. the, the oh, greatest game. The, the all, Leitner game. Yeah, right, the right. Leitner game. Yeah, yeah. And then, remember, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, Leitner so, turns a lot of people. Whoa, I mean, because I was so, I was so all about them. And then Leitner during that game uh, steps on someone's chest. Yeah. And I'm a kid, and so yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm easily swayed. I'm seeing that. I'm like, what? Yeah. He just stepped on his chest. <laughs> yeah. No, Kentucky. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. You know. And then, then, then you had to turn against Kentucky. And yeah. Then we have to turn against. And I'm curious about uh, that because now, I mean, again, I love the tournament. I grew up. I yeah. went to the University of Illinois, mm -hmm. and we were, we had Kendall Gill and Nick yeah. Anderson and Kenny Battle and yeah. all those great players but for, uh, so I love college basketball kind of unconditional I love yeah. it no matter what but you'd certainly hear a lot now that college basketball has lost a little bit of luster uh, that the tournaments a, a people just pay attention to the tournament mm -hmm. which for me when I was a fan I like the tournament was obviously the pinnacle but yeah. I watched the team all the time and also the fact that players are just playing one year and people don't yeah. stick around do, do you uh, as someone that grew up watching it like mm -hmm. me I still love it yeah. but it feels like a different experience than when I was a kid when I loved it Is well, that just because I'm an adult or uh 
I mean, it, it could, it, I, I think it's one of two things. I think it's that, but at the same time, um, I do feel like when we were growing up or when we, when we were watching the tournament back in the, uh, the 80s, 90s, you grew up with these players, yeah. too, because they were, you know, a lot of them, two, three, mainly three, four years. So Leitner, Hurley, Grant Hill, those, those are four-year guys, <laughs> right, you know. Right. So um, uh, Thomas Hill, you like, those, all, those guys were four-year guys. So, um, uh, you know, even when you're watching, you know, Arkansas and their run, that was a two-year run, right, right. you know. Um, in fact... Uh, I remember it was who was it, it was Scotty Thurman, yes, who, who ended yeah, up le yeah, leaving yeah. early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone, everyone was like, "No, you shouldn't leave early." You know. Was, uh, I remember when Elton Brand left Duke. Yeah. and there was this big blow. Like, how could someone leave Duke so early? Yeah. And now it's like, why did someone stay as long at Duke as they did? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you grew up with these players. So when you see Duke now, um, it it ends up being you know, college basketball has been relegated to finding who's going to be the star this year. Right, right as opposed to who is the star we're going to follow for the next three, four years, and, yeah. you know. And one of the things that I worry about college basketball, too, is I think the thing that turned, I think the thing that's really different from when I was a kid yeah. now is the money. Yeah. And I don't mean the money, like, obviously, like, the, the money. But, like, for me, I always remember I went to, uh, I, I was at the Final Four when it was at, in uh, Arlington at mm -hmm. Jerry World. Yeah. And, like, you know, there's, like, diamond-encrusted stripper poles in that place. Wow. I mean, like, in yeah. all seriousness, they actually have those in the upper deck. It's very Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, this billion-dollar building, right? Yeah. This massive, and uh, I believe it was Shabazz Napier mm. uh, was the MVP of that game. Mm -hmm. And after the game, they, inter they interviewed him. And he's like, yeah, it's great, but, like, I literally, they can't pay for food. He'd just been interviewed in the New York Times that week before. And for me, that's what changed it, was the yeah. idea that, like, the imbalance between... In the past, it was like, hey, they're getting an education, but the games are... Like, they're bigger, they're on ESPN, but they, yeah. they're not this billion-dollar business. Yeah. Now, for me, I think you see with the Zion Williams and stuff this year, it feels like, the, like there's billions and billions of dollars being tossed into this game. Yeah. And when the players aren't getting any of it, it feels weird to me. To, it feels like a moral, it's, it's harder morally for me to yeah, watch Yeah, there was a huge, okay, so back uh, in, I mean, you know, I'm also a gamer. Right. And uh, so uh, March Madness, the video game. Oh, yeah, this is the, the, yes. uh, the O'Bannon. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. so like, um, you know, back in 2000, 2001, Bucknell was in the game. And oh. I remember how much. Were you in? Uh, but the thing but it was, is, it was, yeah, right, they, right. like, they can't put your name in. Right, right, and they but can't it was put, you. But it's you, yeah. you know, and I remember being how, how excited I was. Yes. I was like, look at me. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Yo, up to just a scrawny in the game. You know, <laughs> but like, Professor, you actually, yeah. I have to say, forgive me, I want to go off topic yeah. for just a moment. Yeah. I have dreamed of that. You actually got to play as yourself. Yeah, and that's what's crazy, oh, you know? Wow. And so then. Uh, <laughs> that's great. That must have been so it's, exciting. It's so exciting. And, and everybody, all, all my teammates were just so ecstatic yeah. about, like, you know, seeing ourselves in the game, you know, um, you'd wish that your gamer score was a little higher. Yeah. Uh, like all the uh, NBA guys <laughs> with the 99s, you know. Uh, why did I why did I get a 98, not a 99? 99, 99. But, um, but uh, that was a huge thing with not only college basketball, and college, but college football as well, where um, clearly these were, these were those athletes right, in the of course, game. Of course. And the game was making so much money and that was just an example of, uh, of an avenue where um, the players are a huge part of selling something, but then weren't getting anything back from it. I miss those games, but at the same time, I understand, yeah. you know, uh, why the change. So do you still, I'm curious, because I, I, for me, I miss those games too, yeah. but like I just can't, it's hard to, it's impossible to justify it. I think mm -hmm. this is the Zion Williamson thing you saw this year, right? Yeah. Like, I think you make an argument that Zion has, has increased his profile by mm -hmm. playing at Duke this year, yeah. but like the idea that, I mean, he they, they blows out a shoe, with, uh, uh, they're with introducing the, the new the shoe in thing. front of the president, mm. and it's just like uh, national television, it's yeah. just, I don't know, it feels like, like if, that, if that's at a flashpoint for kind of like the whole thing, but that's it, I'm going to watch every minute of the tournament, like yeah. I will not miss a minute of the yeah. tournament. Yeah, so. I mean, and, and, and again, going back to what you said, the beauty of the tournament is about the little guy, yeah. and seeing who emerges out of those, because there's going to gonna be upsets. That's what's, what th we know that for a fact. <laughs> yeah. Even though this, I think this is the first year in many years as far as Vegas and the betting, whatever, I don't bet, but like, but as far as the, um, the uh, spread, this is the first year where I think all the higher seeds yeah. I think there's a clear like separation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So but that does make it more fun. It makes it even more fun. Makes it even more fun. So you, so when, so when you left Bucknell, mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, you you weren't sure you were going to be. You, you, the act, acting came out I, relatively late. In fact, late. no, it actually happened while I was at Bucknell. 
Um, I was injured my, my senior year. Okay. And, what what uh, happened, if you don't mind me? Uh, <laughs> a couple of things. Um, uh, I had a... This is I'm sorry, why? Kind of I'm bringing up so many sad stories. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, but I, mean, I had a huge blister on the bottom of my foot. And okay. I could not walk. Oh, that's... I mean, like, it was like this big around. I mean, that yeah. sounds terrible. Yeah. I was imagining many more embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So I had that, and at the same time, um, I had a, a stress fracture in my foot. Oh, okay, geez, yeah. Yeah, so, so of course, with the stress fracture, right, you right, can't right, do right. anything. Uh, and my coach was just, you know, me and him had a... a um, uh, a rocky relationship, and mm -hmm. that was sort of like when and, and I'm set to start, and then that was like. Did you start the season? Like, yeah, Did you actually? Like start? I was going to start. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I had retooled my jump shot, and I was just excited. It was just one of those summers, you know, working at working out at uh, Georgetown University and at uh, the University of Maryland um, at the time with like Juan Dixon and uh, and Steve Blake. Uh, I was just like, I got my jump shot, yeah. you know, let's go. I'm ready to go back to Bucknell and like yeah. show what I can do. And then it was a clear like, this isn't, this took you as far as it was going to. Oh, wow. There's going to be something else that comes along. And while I was there, I'd been acting for a long time, but for fun. And while I was there, I did a, a, a speech that I used to do at a, um, used to do for competitions in high school. Um, this Martin Luther King speech was the eulogy for the martyred children. Um, I used to do it for competitions for the Forensics Club. And uh, I offered to do it for this Bucknell Gala for Martin Luther King's birthday. And they looked at me like, uh, you're the quiet kid. Why, yeah, where I'm did like, this come where from? Where does this come from? Right, right. And I'm like, oh, you don't think I can do this? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, well, you know what? I'm going to memorize this speech. Because <laughs> right. normally you didn't have to. So I'm going to memorize it. You know, you know I'm going to study his gait, yeah. how he walked, uh -huh. his talk. I'm going to study the speeches behind the speech, but never called it acting. When I did the speech, Got a huge ovation, and one of my teachers, who um, probably was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, uh, Professor Griffiths, uh, Glenn Griffiths, comes up to me and says, Niambi, you're an actor. And I was like, oh, you're right. That's, that's what I am. And from then on, I haven't looked back. So, and so it, it, it's funny because you know, you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. And, but like, I'm always fascinated by, by actors because the, the time it takes to break through. Like it feels yeah. like that's just, and, and it's great because it always feels breaking through. I'm sure you probably don't mm -hmm. feel like you, I mean, you've yeah. got a break and you made it through. But yeah. I imagine when you've gone through that, I know people that have struggled as writers, for example, mm -hmm. when they finally catch a break, yeah. they never feel like, okay, woo. Yeah. I made it. Do you feel that way, or do you feel like you're still? I feel like I'm still. I'm still grinding. You know, it's funny. Uh, it, it is a series of breakthroughs. You know, because um, you know, there, 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 there will be a set of writers who know you're writing. You know, and you've broken through to them. But then there's another set of, uh, you know, set of uh, fans who, uh, when you write something else, they'll be like, well, who is this guy? Yeah. And then other people will be like, you don't know him. You've been writing since blah blah blah. Um, but um, but yeah, it, it's. You know, I um, immediately did a two-year conservatory, then uh, took a year off trying to figure it out, then went to grad school, where I met one of your former guests, uh, Andre Holland. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and because uh, he was a third year when I was a first year. Oh, wow. So yeah, you, yeah. you guys are so, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, he's, he's always talking trash about basketball, but he yeah. knows the truth. <laughs> um, High Flying Bird is a great movie. About yeah, it. I got it. I, yeah. It's really good. Oh, you yeah. it? It's really good. I, I'm going to see it. It's I'm really good. Go it. watch it. I'm going to see it. Uh, I just told him myself. Watch The uh, Good Fight, but also watch... Watch the good fight. I challenge also, uh, Andre Holland to watch the good fight. <laughs> he hasn't already. He better watch. <laughs> if I had known you were coming, I would have hectored him to make sure that he watched. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah, like it, what, what do they say? It takes twenty years to become an overnight success. Yeah, right. And so, uh, like a lot of my, I, I went to this US premiere last night, and um, you know, I've seen my, uh, my friends Lupita mm -hmm. and uh, and Winston, and I've known them for so many right. years. Uh, even seeing like Chadwick uh, Boseman, who I've known since 2001, um, you know, playing Black Panther, I'm like, I've known them way back when, and then they're like, oh my gosh, where they find this guy? Like, <laughs> I've literally this guy been around for, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and that's what's encouraging. It's a, it's you know, you just keep grinding, you keep playing, and 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 also when you have, I guess, quote unquote, made it. Um, you know, I, I still feel like you got to continue grinding because you know that's it's. You've made it to a, a moment, you know, and now it's a, that moment, you use that as an opportunity to create more stories and create uh, more interesting characters and, and um, have a platform to speak to people on a level that you've always dreamt of. 
So I would think the good fight, which I have to say is like, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the good fight, particularly now, it feels like particularly relevant at this oh, particular yeah. moment in human history. Yeah. Oh, when we get to the individual questions, most mm -hmm. of my questions are about how I'm terrified of this particular moment in human yeah, history, yeah, and course, I yeah. need you to comfort me. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I don't know if I can help you. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay, okay, show's over. Yes, uh, I got you. But, uh, uh, but I'm curious, like, it, it does feel, do you, when you think of what you've done, you were on Mike and Molly, obviously yeah. some, some stuff you've done there, yeah. but it does feel, uh, and I, you were great on that show, mm -hmm. but this feels like, more of the now, like mm -hmm. more of like it feels like a, like like frankly more in your in your comfort zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would that be a fair yeah. assessment? Yeah, you, you know it's funny uh, when I got my kid Molly, um, you know like, you know people know me as goofy and and you know uh, uh, I'd like to think they, that they think I'm funny, <laughs> but um, I think you're funny. But what happens is um, they they know that they've seen my work on 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 stage. They've seen me do you know Broadway. They've seen me do off Broadway. Uh, and all these straight plays, and they never imagined me doing a comedy, let alone a sitcom, <laughs> let alone a character from Senegal in a restaurant that wears a goofy hat, you know. But um, but uh, that was so much fun, and that was of the time because there were a lot of people. In, what I love is that there are a lot of people who want and need some sort of uh, you know escape. A, you know, a, a laugh or to connect with a family in which we were. We were a family, you know, uh, with uh, Billy Gardell, Melissa mm -hmm. McCarthy, um, Reno Wilson, Susie Kurtz. It was a few, quite a few yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, it was a family, you know, Katie Mixon, it was a family. Uh, Cleo King, I want to make sure I say everybody, uh, Al Higgins. You're, you're not um, winning an award. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, so I gotta, <laughs> if you miss someone, uh, they won't thank be Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to give you an award. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, but really, God. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but but like, but this here, the writing was great for that. Loved that. The writing on this show, the good fight, it's incredible, man. Like, um, and I, I, I tell people the the writers, the the kings, uh, and the the writing staff that they put together, they take so many chances, and they take chances in such a way that challenges the actors to explore places that they normally. They normally speak of in private, you know, um, especially uh, on on matters of race, politics, because you, it used to be that those were pri private matters, you know. But now everything is so in your face. It's just like I, I, and it feels fit to the moment too. Yes. Like, oh, listen, I liked The Good Wife, yeah. but that was a show that was on national television yeah. that people like could stumble across after their local yeah, yeah, yeah. local news. Yeah. This because no, and of course people are all able to watch it very easily. Yeah. But like because it's a streaming show, it feels like you can push that. You don't have to worry about hitting every single quadrant. You can just do the show. Yeah. 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 Now the the yeah, I mean they they can they can write what they want to write. Yeah. yeah. That's what I. That's what it, lo it. It feels that way. I'm like, oh, they write them, but they won't write. <laughs> that's great. Okay, that's let's plan. go. You know, <laughs> and it, it's just it's fun, man. Um, I mean, there are things uh, we're, we're still filming right now, um, and we're 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 filming the the final final episode of the season. Okay. So what happens at the very uh, end? Uh, all kinds of things happen. Okay, well, um, specifically. Uh, spe specifically, stuff. Oh. I can't do that. Specific. You know, I, I can't know, do that. I know. I know. Do that. I don't personally want to know. You know, I want to watch the show. I'm just, but, I'm just uh, testing your resilience. But there's, I mean, the stuff we're exploring. It's just, it's things that we, you know, as far as, especially on the, uh, with the racial component, because my you know, my character, uh, Jada Persia, um, touches a lot uh, uh, on race during this season, and we're speaking on things that, you know, for black folks, we're like. You know, it's it. We almost feel like it's a conversation we have only amongst ourselves. But the fact that we're having it out in this platform, uh, it's special, man. It's special. Right, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna plug it again. Mm -hmm. Watch that and High Flying Bird. Yes. This is the Andre Holland challenge. Yes. Watch the good fight, Andre Holland, when you're watching. Thank you. I know uh, all guests on the show watch yes. all shows afterward. It's, yeah, that's that's. It's the, you have to go watch every episode of this show too. Yeah, done. After done. You're done. I've started. Okay, so now we're gonna go to my uh, frivolous questions of dubious import. Okay. Questions specifically for you. All the other questions are just generic questions I ask of every guest. Dubious. But these are the dubious questions of frivolous import. Dubious questions. Or frivolous, of frivolous. Frivolous questions of dubious import. Frivolous. There we go. I got my edges back. Dubious export. I've oh. literally said this like 50 times. I get it wrong every time. Oh. Okay, so. Get 
getting back to the Oklahoma stuff, where did you watch uh, the Rose Bowl against Georgia? But I should warn you, by the way, I oh. live in Athens, Georgia. Oh, I live Georgia? in Athens, Georgia. I yeah. currently live there. Yes. So uh, I. Why are you doing this? Well, yes, you ask what you're doing. Wait, are you, but you're not. A, you're not a Georgia. I'm not from Illinois. Georgia. My wife is from Georgia, so okay. we, so he moved down there. I feel like this is a personal attack. It's not a personal attack. Okay. It's just a simple recitation. I of was facts. at the game. You were at the game. I was at the game. Go on. Okay, and I thought we were going to win this game. Uh, yes, it but seemed I like it. I believe that Baker Mayfield was still sick. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, because he, he, he was ill that he week. Was that's ill right. That week. That's right. That's right. And I feel like the second half, mm -hmm. he was a little, you know, he still was coming off, you know, his, you know, his sickness. And that had he been at full strength. Yes, yes. Georgia was going down. Okay. You know, so that's all I'm saying. So uh, acting is about pain. Yes. And so I let's a lot talk some more about that. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm curious, though, that, that leads to the question. Yeah. Are, are, are you a Baker Mayfield guy or a Kyler Murray guy? Oh, that's a, they're very different, man. I know. I'm, I'm, they're very I, I, different. That's why. If they were the same, it wouldn't be a choice. I know. Mm, I can't. No, see, I can't do that. They're all my babies, man. I okay. can't. Okay, I, can't do that. I understand. Can't choose. I can't. Choose. I can't, man. Have you met either one? Have you? Have no, you, I haven't. Yeah. My sister has, um, because my sister she ran track for for OU, and uh, she uh, she sends me pictures with the, with the guys. I'm like, oh, see, so you're laughing at me, you know, letting me know <laughs> that you're the cool one in the family. So, but yeah, they're very different. They're very different. Very yeah. Different. Okay. I love them both. Okay. All right. And you, I feel like if if there was a healthy Hollywood Brown, mm, okay, that Alabama game is different. Okay. All right, I'm with you. Yeah, so it's, uh, go on. But uh, remember the Rose Bowl when no, never. Mind. I'm oh, not. Man. I went to Illinois. So listen, I went to Illinois. I'm not going to make. I have two children. I'm not going to make my little boys watch Illinois football over Georgia football. Well, who they had? They Georgia. brought. Um, they brought someone over that was in the NFL, right? Like a couple, few years ago. Oh yeah, they, they brought in Kirby Smart, who was with Alabama. Who was he's part yeah. of the Nick Saban evil tree. Yes, yes. So yes. now we have now they have a a, a, yeah. a new evil tree <laughs> in Athens. Uh, we keep it. Uh, it keeps us out of the sun. Yeah. Um, okay, so if Oklahoma and yeah. Bucknell played in an NCAA tournament game, who would oh, you cheer for? Oh. Okay. Oh that man, man. Man, I feel like such a good journalist. That's. I'm asking such hard questions. Um, After this, I'm going to have him calculate This would be, okay. Um, oh, man. That's, oh, God. I, uh, <laughs> why do you this do this to great. me? Why do you, this is a streaming show we okay. literally have as all the let time me, as let, our server Let me tell you hold. this. Let me tell you this. All okay, right, I'm going to say this. Okay. It's fa fascinating that I went to Bucknell because of this. Um, as a Sooner fan, we're taught to hate Orange. Mm -hmm. So, and um, so, of course, we hate the University of Texas. Mm -hmm. We hate uh, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Um, we'd hate the Tennessee Volunteers if we could. Yeah. Um, my Illini, yes. you would hate my Illini. Yeah, yeah, I'd hate your Illini, yeah. yes, yes. Um, all in good fun, guys. Of course, no. But, um, uh, but Bucknell, we're also or we're blue and orange. We're orange right. and blue. Um, Syracuse would be another one. Mm -hmm. But we're orange and blue. And um, so um, that fandom would say that I would then have to root, I, I'd have to root for uh, the, his, uh, <laughs> I love it. Wow. Mm. I hope I didn't break you. You kind of did, man. Had, well, I'm listen, sorry. listen. You know, I, it, Bucknell, without Bucknell, I don't feel um, like I'd be where I'm at right now as, as an actor. I don't think, I, I would not have found what I'm doing right now. Um, I did have an interesting experience playing ball at Bucknell. Mm -hmm. One that, because um, I always thought I was going to play professionally, right. play overseas and all that. You know, it's always the dream. Yeah, yeah. And um, for whatever reason, again, you know, I stated earlier, me and my coach, you know, we, we, had, a, we had a relationship. Look up that yeah. coach on Google and then send him nasty. No, no. He didn't tell him you love. to do that. I did. Yeah, I told him to do that. Send him love. Because no. he, yeah, okay. yeah, you know, because we've since, you know. We've oh, you're okay since, now. Yeah, yeah we've Okay, don't do that. Never mind. Never mind. Don't do that. You know, he's, he's, do he's, um, yeah, no, he's great. I'm, I'm, nah, man. I love y'all, Bucknell. Okay. I love y'all, but I grew up. I'm, my family was Sooners, so I gotta say, uh, I gotta say Sooners. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious. I find both the Bucknell and the Oklahoma mascots fascinating to look at. Yes. Do they look? Uh, what celebrity or person of famous import does either one of them look? That uh, either of them look like? They're both very heavily personified. So like, like the bison. Yeah. Versus in them because we use uh, a horse. Yeah, but there's the guys, and there's like the guy that's running the that's, that's got the that's yeah, well, yeah. The, I mean, the, that's the, the wagon the guy, schooner, the super yeah, schooner. schooner, right? Yeah, the um, wagon guy, the wagon guy. That's you know the, the wagon term. guy. The technical ter the technical term is uh, the wagon guy. The wagon guy, um, the guy of wagons. Uh, celebrity that looks like the sooner schooner. You don't have to come up with an answer if you don't want to. In in a way, he is all of us. You know what? 
I came really close to crying when you said that. <laughs> yeah, well, as I said, I ask the tough questions, and I bring you to tough emotional places. Yeah, you did. Um, okay, so I, I'm curious. I, I've, uh, um, uh, one of the things when uh, when we got kind of a fact sheet about you, one of the things that, that came yeah. in the fact sheet was that Dick Vitale had said that you had the, the one of the names of the yeah, tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, uh, uh, which means I think it's just it probably it's just because it's the same name twice. Yeah, yeah, the all name team. Yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah, seem yeah. that too exciting. But I'm curious. Did you ever think of like maybe making the last name? Like when people are like, oh, how do you pronounce your name? Yeah. Say the first name is pronounced this way, but yeah. then the second name is pronounced this way. Just Nambi. Yeah, just to yeah, mess yeah. with them. That would be kind of fun. Uh, Nambi Nimbi. Yeah, just like, just yeah, honestly, yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Is like, you can you can just tell people whatever you want. They I can tell when you. someone's saying my last name yeah. first. Yeah. Oh, really? You can, you can tell from like I the can inflection? tell by the cadence. Interesting. Nambi, so, like, do, do people say last names with a different cadence? I guess they, they do. do. They, yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, they don't go, go back up. and see. Yeah, right. They, they go you know, up they and then look, they close down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So. Well, I'm sure I totally did that when I introduced yeah. you. So here's a legitimate question because I know people have had this trouble. Mm. Uh, people that love the show. Yeah. Do you have a CBS All Access account? Like you're on your personal computer. I do. So was it hard to sign up for? Because I, I, I took me a couple tries to actually do it, okay. and I know that's been a thing. Okay, and this is where you have to find uh, a young techie. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. But luckily for me, uh, I I uh, actually was an uh, you know was an IT guy. But, oh, so you were as yeah. as as, were as my IT? survival as a survival gig. Oh, I'm wow. Very computer savvy. Wow. Yeah, but like as an IT. I knew, person, I'm not surprised you're computer savvy. Yeah. I'm surprised that you were an IT guy. Well, what's funny? All, all IT people do is because a lot of people uh, are not, you know. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> oh, you have to just be yeah, yeah. not, not. So, so, people, so people, you know, the, the problems would be like, something's wrong with my computer. And then I look around, and then I'm like, I walk up, and I'm like, uh, power button. <laughs> right. just, just turn the power on. Or I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm plug and they're like, in. thanks, IT guy. You might want to plug that in. Yeah, so I mean, it's like literally <laughs> the, right. the simplest right. thing. All so. right. All right, well, then, then. So, but I will say this about all access. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, it, it's. It, it, it's not. It's not as hard. In fact, they're making it easier and easier to um, to be able to sign up. Uh, there are very there are various avenues uh, now. You can do it through Amazon Prime. Right. You can do it through iTunes. Of course, you can do it through your smart TV. Mm -hmm. um, just like SITV. By yes, way, just like SITV. SITV. Just like. Um, you know, I used to um, I used to uh, buy all have all of my Sports Illustrated, and I would um, cut the uh, the cover and hang them. On oh. every single section <laughs> of my so wall, what, 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 what year stretch is this? What year stretch? I mean, we're talking about from ninety, I'd say ninety, because this is high school. So ninety, well, even before high school. So ninety uh, two, ninety two, ninety three, through college. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so through college. So because uh, even That's even my cool. dorm room at Bucknell wow. was like Sports Illustrated, and then I would go to the ceiling. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you have a roommate? Was your roommate okay with this? Uh, my roommate uh, <laughs> was. Uh, he he sighed a lot. Yeah. He just. <laughs> yeah, you were probably taller than he was, so he couldn't really. No, actually, anything. my roommate, my <laughs> freshman year, he was uh, in a fellow basketball player. Oh okay. So uh, he, was, he was uh, he was six ten. Oh, he could have taken those down. Very yeah, he well. could have. That would he, he indulge you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and my last uh, my last question. Yeah. Uh, I asked this of all the guests uh, on the last show, mm -hmm. on the last course of every show. Uh, I look around the world right now, mm -hmm. and it seems um, perilous would yeah. be the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, are we going to be okay? Can you tell me that we're going to be okay? I think uh, well, one of the biggest things I've, I've taken up since uh, the events of the last few years, mm -hmm. the, um, the last couple of years, mm -hmm. is uh, meditation. Okay. So I meditate every day. I uh, make sure I take a deep breath before I do anything. And in that breath, I'm able to know that everything will be fine. Okay. That there has to be a balance okay. in this universe. Okay. If Star Wars hasn't taught us anything else, right. Right. there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Yes. Okay. And so therefore, I do feel like where you know, we've, the pendulum has swung in this direction, um, with the way I, th I feel like our systems are set up, that in some way it has to have that okay. opposite reaction. Okay, that's good to know. So. Yeah. The only thing that makes me feel bad about that is you probably also had that moment before the Rose Bowl. And, uh, I did have that. Not at all. 
Why? Why we were ringing the rose oval? Why? I know. I'm, I'm just. I'm like, just. I'm just, just hypothetically speaking. I thought we just, were I just, friends. I, no, I mean, just a thing. I, I thought just, we were friends. Just like kind of we popped were talking, out. I, you know, we were having a good time. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You're right. You're right. <laughs> now, hopefully, this is about better than that. Yeah. Um, for some people. Um, all right. So thank you, sir. No, thank, thank you, sir. you so much. That was very man. fun. Uh, <laughs> because it's Niambi, Niambi. Niambi. Please watch the Good Fight on CBS All Access. New episodes every Thursday. And all, so watch the Good Fight, and then we will make sure that Andre Holland watches High Flying Bird. And no, make sure, I'll watch High Flying Bird. Right, right. He's already and seen he, it. He's, he's literally it. He in it. Seen it. Right. Um, he, I'll watch High Flying Bird. Right. He watches the Good Fight. And, and both of you watch this. Yes. Um, thank you. It's a, good, it's a deal. Done. Um, all right. So this has been the Will Lead Show. Uh, come back uh, on SITV to watch this show again if you want. Bye.